God, the devil, heaven, hell, eternal life, eternal damnation. Hello everybody, I am Professor McCurdy and welcome to Religion 103. Most people don't know how we got the Bible. Many seem to think it just descended with an angel in the year 1611 when the King James Version was published. However, archaeology has taught us a great deal without the help of angels. <laughs> I'm sure most of you know the story of when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. We now know that story is fiction. It was likely only a handful of Semites left Egypt, took refuge with a tribe in the Sinai, who worshipped a local god called Yahweh, and then they went north and exaggerated their story. Professor? You have a question? Yeah. So, are you saying that the Bible isn't true? We don't talk of truth in this class. We speak of evidence. I don't believe in trigger warnings, so please understand this. This class will introduce you to new ways of thinking about religion, and that may be disturbing. What's your name? Becky. Well, Becky, college is about critical thinking. I will give you evidence and you will decide for yourselves. And the best evidence is that the story of Exodus did not happen. So you're saying that Charlton Heston was full of shit? I'm not sure what Charlton Heston was full of. How do you know it happened the way you say it did? Were you there? Were you? No, but I can read about it in the Bible. We can't use the Bible to prove the Bible. If you don't think the Bible comes from God, then how are we supposed to know what's right and wrong? Critical thinking. Well, my critical thinking says that there must be a God and a Satan, or you can't have good and evil. Satan is also fiction. He was invented by the writers from the book of Job. And voila. In Job chapter 1, verse 5, we have Yahweh say to Satan, Whence comest thou? Uh, chapter 1, verse 7. Is it? Yeah, though. Yahweh didn't really say that. Come again? It's a misquote. God didn't start the conversation at all. Satan did. And your evidence for this? <laughs> well, I was there. <laughs> Thank you. But let's proceed with the evidence at hand. Unless somebody wants to prove to me that they are Methuselah. <laughs> oh, well, Methuselah lived 969 years. And the Book of Job is over 2,000 years old, so even Methuselah would be a liar. Let's proceed, shall we? The way scholars do on the Book of Job. It is not a historical event. It is also fiction made up by the ancient priests who invented Satan to create conflict with their character Yahweh. So when they have Satan say to Yahweh, Thou has blessed the work of his hands? Uh, yeah, you're right. The priest made that up. <laughs> In fact, Satan said no such thing. He said, uh, <laughs> said, you've made him rich. Who are you? Satan. <laughs> Satan. Uh, yes, uh, S-A-T-H-A-N. Satan. Zachary. Okay, Mr. Satan. Well? You are not on my roster, and this is a closed class. Oh, I'm on the roster. Okay. Well, seeing that we are in academia, let's have this community of scholars judge the evidence. And as you can see... Uh... Well, I'm convinced. Anybody else? <laughs> You know, you, you can get a much better understanding of the conversation in Job by re-examining the first three chapters in the Book of Enoch that you translated for your dissertation. It's hidden in an acrostic. 
I don't give trigger warnings either, Professor. <laughs> Evelyn. Henry. I'm sorry. You're working late? Yeah, I'm just revisiting my dissertation. An acrostic? Some ancient aliens theorist put you up to this? Of course. I was just having a conversation with the Martians just yesterday. <laughs> well, it is an interesting idea. If I could prove that there is hidden messages in here, Henry, this could be a major breakthrough, you know? You will have officially found the devil in the details. Look, I know it sounds crazy. Hezekiah would have been proud of you. Yeah. He was a great mentor. You know, we never really talked much about him. His death was a real tragedy. Yes. But in the end, he... He what? You don't have to hold it in. Why are we talking about this right now, Henry? Evelyn, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? Enough to get me through the night classes. You remember how Hezekiah was at the end, right? Stressed, caffeine addict. Doctor said he hadn't slept in weeks. Henry, I'm sure a little caffeine isn't what made Hezekiah kill himself. I understand that. All I'm saying is that maybe it would help if you talk to someone. Uh I know this therapist. He's great. I'll look into it. You know, you never said how you got onto this. There was this student in class. Have you heard of um, Zachary Sathan? No. Evelyn, please take care of yourself.
It's Beverly, right? Hi, Professor. It's Becky, actually. Becky, Becky. I really enjoyed your comments in class yesterday. Seriously? Yes, they got me thinking. About? About how important your religion is to you. And I want you to know that no matter what I said in class, I don't want you to take offense to it. Okay. I mean, it's perfectly normal for debates to take place. In fact, I encourage it. Look, I really have to get going. Oh, shoot. Here, let me help you. No, it's fine. I got it. I, I got, got it. it. Is this for your church? Look, if you're just going to criticize me, it can wait until after class. No, I think this is great. You do? Yeah. It's important to have something to believe in. Well, keep it. Thank you. Hey, you're a freshman, right? Yeah. And that Zach, he's, he's a freshman too? Yeah. Um, he says he's sorry about yesterday. Oh, you know him? Yeah, we've been friends since high school. Really? Yeah. He's very smart, isn't he? Totally. He's literally a genius. Helped me a lot studying for my AP test and SAT. He used to go to some crazy academic camp every summer. Academic camp? What kind of academic camp? They'd like study Oedipus and Shakespeare and do all these weird interpretations. Interpretations of text? Yeah, basically. Any religious text? I'm not sure, but there he is. You can ask him right now. Professor McCurdy? No, that's not Zach. I want to apologize for missing class yesterday. I'm sorry, you are? I'm Zach. No, Zach was in my class yesterday. No, he wasn't. Professor, are you feeling okay? I'm perfectly fine. So you're not Zachary Sathan? It's Lewis. Excuse me? I'm Zach Lewis, and I'm late for class. Bye, Zach. Bye, Becky. Um, Professor, are you sure you're feeling better? Better? Better than what? Better from when you felt sick and had to cancel the last half of class yesterday. I did what? We were reading some passage from the book of Job. Started feeling lightheaded, said we'd pick up where we left off on Wednesday. Job? Yeah. Can't wait, Evelyn. For what? Wait a minute. Did I get it wrong? Your lecture? The one on forgotten history? Oh shit, that's today. My lecture. You're right. Thank you, Professor. so much. Are you nervous? No, oh, something like that. It's gonna be okay. Did you get done with the translations? I just need a couple more minutes and I'll be good. Okay, great. So when you're ready, just walk on in, okay? Don't knock, just come on in. Okay. Wait. Deep breath. <sighs> you're gonna kill it in there. Thank you. I will with your help. Good afternoon, everybody. Good Don't know if you picked up on it already, but historians have no sense of time. <laughs> I was asked to come here today to speak about my latest publication. However, my recent findings will revolutionize the way we interpret religious text. What if ancient texts could talk to us, not in the usual translation, but let's say in the form of hidden messages, acrostics. For example, take the first letter of each line in the book of Enoch, put them in order, and a whole new sentence appears. He has made you rich. He has made you rich. 2,500 years later, and a whole new opening dialogue from the book of Job. Wait, how do you know it's from the book of Job? Let's just say it's a suspicion I have. How did you come up with that? It was a student, wasn't it? A student? Must be brilliant. Let's just say it was something that just came to me, OK? But at any event, we have a lot more to be done here. And Esther, my grad assistant, will be translating for us. Esther, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Thank you. 
Here we have Codex 11Q5, also the Dead Sea Scrolls, which contains the Book of Enoch. Esther, please, the translation? Hezekiah is dead. What? Hezekiah is not in the Book of Job. No. No, no, no. no. Let's move on to um, Code 11Q6, uh, also from the Book of Enoch. Esther, please, translation? I did it. What? I did it. No! Esther, stop it! Stop it! Esther, no! I did it. No! I did it. 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 Hello? Dr. Kane? Dr. Kane? Excellent choice. I like to think it has all the answers, provided you know where to look. Of course, if all my clients embrace scripture, I'd be out of business. Satan? Mark Kane, clinical psychologist. You must be, uh... Leaving. Evelyn! It's normal to get cold feet, but running away won't change anything. Especially when you have so many unanswered questions. And why shall I believe a word you say, hmm? Well, that, Miss McCurdy, is a matter of faith. See, I consider therapy to be like archaeology for the metaphysical. I may have to dig up a few skeletons, but the truth will always be uncovered. We're done talking. Jesus Christ! You might need this. In case you reconsider. What? Why are you doing this to me? Let's start from the beginning. Why did you come here today? You're not answering my question. And you're avoiding mine. I can't help you, Miss McCurdy, unless you help me first. So, why did you come here? Let's just say that my hand was forced. Meaning what? Meaning that I picked my job over my ego. And if I had known that you were going to be the shrink here today, I would have reconsidered coming. And how did this particular arrangement come about? Did something happen recently? You know exactly what happened. Stop playing games with me, Zach. <laughs> Very well. Seeing as we're on the subject, why don't we talk about some of the games that you've played, Evelyn? Don't know what you're talking about. Let me show you. Please, take a seat. I insist. Some might simply see toys for children 
I see the age-old conflict between good and evil. What has this got to do with me? All will be revealed in due time, Evelyn. You see, once upon a time, there was a young peasant girl. Clever, sourceful girl who wanted nothing more than to be a princess. And she worked tirelessly and shamelessly to claw her way to the top of the social ladder. And one day, she came across a dragon, who laid a stepping stone on her path to the ivory tower. This dragon, old and gentle though he was, he took the young peasant girl under his wing and was overjoyed to share his fame and fortune with her. Soon, word spread of the young woman's success, and before long, a knight came along and promised her a spot in the ivory tower. But unbeknownst to that knight, the peasant girl was a fraud. She was nothing without her benefactor. You're missing the best part. So the peasant girl, oh, she did what she does best and played both sides. After tricking the dragon into giving her all his treasure, or in this case, his research, Championed by Sir Henry Vexy, her knight in shining armor, the Lady of Unsoon had everything she had ever wanted. And poor Hezekiah, dear old dragon, he died broken and alone. You know, I do wonder what hurt worse. Was it the impact of his body against the concrete? Or was it perhaps the overwhelming feeling of betrayal? I understand you were like a daughter to her, weren't you? No, our father who art in heaven. Hello, the grand man, the king, the king, Oh, I think we are well past that point now, Evelyn. We can make this all go away. You just have to tell me one thing. Who's responsible for Hezekiah's death? It was a suicide. That doesn't answer my question. Did you drive him to do it? Yes. Are you to blame for his death? Yes. But Evelyn, who killed Alder Hezekiah? I did. It's okay now. We're gonna wipe the slate clean. All I ask is that you. Take a leap of faith. I did it! 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 I did it
I know that what happened to Professor McCurdy has caused some distress, but believe me, if any of you need any help or anyone to talk to, I am here to provide it. Sorry, I thought Professor Vesey was covering this class. <laughs> Don't be sorry. There's nothing wrong with question authority. I do it all the time. <laughs> my name is Professor Mark Payne, and I'll be taking over this course. And as my first order of business, get out your textbooks and put them right here, where they belong. We won't be needing any scholarly interpretations. This is amazing. I have a new favorite teacher. And I have a new favorite student. Becky, oh, am I? Yeah, sure. Professor? You had a question. Um, Professor McCurdy said we'd be studying the Bible like any other text. With scholarly intent? Won't we need our textbooks? Or any outside information? Well, let me answer your question with another one. Is the Bible like any other text? I suppose not. Look, the Bible's existed for thousands of years. Hundreds of different interpretations exist in all sects of Christianity, Judaism, Islam. I mean, everybody thinks they have the answer for what it really means. Are you saying every interpretation is wrong? No, I'm saying the Bible's wrong, too. Let's start with Genesis. I mean, Satan is a serpent. <laughs> but really? Well, and, and so this, this naked woman is hungry, and he offers her some fruit, and that's something to get all worked up about. I mean, an apple is loaded with antioxidants. Professor Kane, are you saying you know more about the Bible than the Bible? Relax, Zach. You'll catch on. They call me Zach. Yeah? Never told him my name. Now, as they say in Ephesians 6 11, put on the whole armor of God and let's get started. Let's begin with this, uh, quote unquote Genesis. Sorry to interrupt, but I believe the entire quote from Ephesians is put on the whole armor of God that ye may stand against the wiles of the devil. Very true. See, so you still have your textbook. Thanks, I think I'll hang on to it. I didn't catch your name. Gabriel. <laughs> 